So what we did was we determined by showing all our work, we found the vertical, horizontal, and slant asymptotes, right? So now the last thing we need to do is determine, um, we need to determine what this graph looks like, all right, and determine solution points. On your quiz, you do not have to graph it. I'm not going to ask you to graph it. However, I'm going to ask you to do your solution points. So what solution points do I want you to choose? Well, we know what our slant asymptote is, and we know what our vertical asymptote is. So we have a vertical asymptote. Our vertical asymptote is at 0. Then we have a vertical asymptote at 1. And then we have 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2. So all I'm going to ask you guys to do is um, I would like you guys to pick two, at two, um, I'd like you to pick two uh, solution points to the left of your vertical asymptotes and two uh, solution points to the right of your vertical asymptote. I'd also like you to be able to pick a point in, in between your asymptotes. But for right now, I just don't really have the time to, you know, to go through um, exactly all of them. However, let's look at our, our slant asymptote is at plus 1, right? And then it has a slope of 1 over 1. So our as slant asymptote is going to look something like this. So that's what all our asymptotes are. Remember, our asymptotes are where our graph is going to approach, right? Remember your graph approaches your asymptotes? So let's just go and take a look at some, uh, at some points and see what we can come up with. So I'm going to say on my xy table, ooh, senior, is that under three minutes? Everybody? No? Uh, well, a little tardy. All right, um, let's do two, three, negative 1, and negative 2. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, to find your solution points, I'm not going to do it with a fraction just because I don't have time and I don't have a calculator. I'm just going to give these solution points. If you have a graphing calculator, you can easily graph it, find the table, you're good to go. If you don't, you're going to have to plug in each one of these points. OK, so 2 cubed is going to be 8 minus 1 is 7. Divided by 4 minus 2 is 2. So it's going to be 7 halves. Number 3, f of 3. Three cubed is 27, minus 1 is 26. Divided by 9 minus 2 is going to be, um, oh, that's 3, right? It is 9 minus 3, which would be 6. And then we do f of negative 1. So that becomes negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. And then we do f of negative 2. Yeah, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reduce them all in a second. Um, yeah. Oh, no, I messed it up. There you go. I forgot to put parentheses around there. Uh, minus 1 divided by negative 2 squared minus a negative 2. Make sure, guys, when you're evaluating, put parentheses around your negative numbers. Because negative 2 cubed is going to be a negative 8 minus 1 is negative 9. And then you have negative 2 squared, which is 4, minus a negative 2, which is now going to be 6. So when I go and simplify this, I'll just write the decimal because it will be easier to graph this. Um, this could be 13 over 2. That equals positive 1. And that equals um, a negative 3 halves. I mean, it. Yeah, I'll talk about it as far as your test goes in a second. But does everybody understand what I did to find the solution table just by hand, what you need to do? Is that OK? Everybody understand? I would like you also to find, um, uh, 
you know, work through also between your point. On your test, you're not going to have one where you're going to have a fraction in between those two points. But always between your asymptotes, you guys should be able to work for that. OK? Yes, Destiny, question? No? Maybe so?